<laughs> I was a seventh grade reading teacher for uh, most of the time. I'm from around Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I don't think we have any Pennsylvanians here. Nobody left Pennsylvania to come to Vermont. Uh, we've got uh, Texas. Yes. Where are you from? Chester County. Where? Pennsylvania. Chester County? Where's that at? It's outside Philly in the center of the world. Oh. <laughs> How did you like the Eagles last night? Did they win or not? I don't do those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Finally, when I went to bed. Uh, but uh, I was a Phillies fan. Um, then I switched. Then I became basketball the Knicks because I taught New Jersey Knicks after I uh, went to King's College in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, and then uh, I taught fourth grade in New Jersey. No nope, from New Jersey. Where? Clifton. Clifton up no, northern. Okay, I was in the middle of the state, uh, Old Bridge, oh. East Brunswick. <laughs> I yeah, I st I mean I'm from here, but I I live in in New Brunswick and Clinton <laughs> and uh, Flemington. Oh, Flemington Furs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember. And then I met my wife, who was uh, father was a farmer from Dutchess County and also near Schenectady, and also uh, Connecticut. So uh, we decided we didn't want to live in New Jersey. Where are you from originally? East Montpelier. Oh. East Montpelier? <laughs> originally? Yeah. Yeah, which one are we You don't look like you're from East Montpelier. I was there. What does oh, what East, East Montpelier. Montpelier look like? <laughs> East Montpelier. Tell us, what I thought you would be from New York City. Where are you from? Massachusetts, now living in East Montpelier. <laughs> East Montpelier, that's where Michelle is. Well, uh, we decided we wanted to live in the Cats someplace else. Catskills, we got a job in a little town called Delhi. And Michelle, could you shut these lights? I don't know, sometimes people know where there's a little Dinky town is. Let's, let's see. Right there, near Oneonta. I don't know if you ever heard of that one. Sure. Hartwick. Uh, Hartwick College is there, Oneonta State. And then Bing, some people go to Binghamton, and there's Albany up there. So we were in no man's land, uh, country. Uh, we had junior college, uh, and we had um, farmers. And so it was a mixture of kids. So it was neat to raise my kids, three kids there. And uh, we had the Catskills. Uh, we thought we were also in the Catskills. This is the, uh, the surrounding area. And we bought this old farmhouse. Anybody have an old farmhouse here in Vermont? <laughs> hey, so you know, you know what it is, fixing up uh, farmhouses. And so this was a, a, a farmhouse, then a, a college or dormitory, or, yes, something like that, from some a guy who owned it from Long Island. Where's our Long Island people? Some of you are from Long Island. Huh? I thought, that must have been yesterday. I was in Bennington Museum yesterday. And uh, so we got this, it was really bad shape, uh, empty for about uh, two years. Windows smashed, and uh, so in 1974, we got it for 27,500. <laughs> and just gutted it, and uh, fixed it up little by little, you know, as the kids came along, and it was a good uh, place to uh, uh, raise kids. And then up at the top of this mountain, I didn't even know, was a fire tower that came down in 75, and I didn't even know it that that would be my first book that I'd ever write, a uh, book about fire towers of uh, the Catskills. And these are all the books that I've done, mostly in retirement. So the thing is, don't uh, sit down. These are travel books. You know how you have the 251 Club? Yeah. Well, I said, well, I did six books on the Adirondacks. Get the people to visit all the 102 towns, and it's a journal, and you also keep you have to get it signed, stamped or signed. Cool. Uh, then I did, went to Connecticut and I did this one, and who could tell me, now we're gonna have a little contest, a little prize. <laughs> Michelle, yeah. she's still here? Yeah. 
All right, who could tell me what town in Connecticut is on my cover? Mr. Who said that? What's your name? Richard. Richard gets 10 points. <laughs> it's mystic, but this part of the mystic is in Groton. Okay? And the other side, the bridge where I, the guy took the picture, is in Stonington. And then a guy uh, said, after I did all these books, I did books on uh, CCCs, the Adirondacks, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. So I am very lucky and honored to be here. I mean, I'm driving around looking at the scenery, you know. How many people could drive around and just go and interview, meet people, and gather the stories of the 35 CCC camps here that you have had, you know? And uh, like today, or yesterday, I was in um, Bennington, and then on the way I stopped in Pulteney, and Pulteney had a CCC camp, but it was a, anybody know where Pulteney is? Yeah. Anybody go there? Yeah. Big thing with slate, you know, the slate roofs. And right where the camp supposedly was, they, there was a guy, you know, the company selling slate, and the guy was showing me how they punch the the two holes in it just by just it's just tapping and it puts the two holes in it. So I'll pass this around. This is their their CCC camp uh, yearbook. And you people before I forget, too. This is a yearbook about the building of the three dams to stop the waters from coming into the Winooski River. And the CCC built these dams. So this is a 1937 yearbook. This is, oh God, I got this on eBay. <laughs> Maybe just a little more light so they could, can you see, okay? Yeah. Okay, well, okay, we'll keep the lights out. Uh, you okay? Okay. So then I left New Jersey where the school that we were teaching in was called Jonas Salk Middle School and I got to meet Jonas Salk. That was something, you know. How many remember in the 50s getting the little cubes of sugar and, and then somebody said, oh, we got the shots. Okay. Uh, but this was built by the WPA during the Depression. A lot of the, a lot of schools and town halls. And WPA is different from CCC in that the WPA, uh, they were older men, usually, and they went home every day, and they did projects, sewers, roads, uh, buildings. And I was a reading teacher, and I went to parochial school. I don't know if anybody else had nuns, but we didn't have the books that they have for kids today in libraries. and. You know, so I never liked to read that much. But when I got to this little town of Delhi, this, the kid said, Mr. Podscutch, this book, My Side of the Mountain, won me a Newbery Award for the best book for children, chosen from librarians all over the United States, was all about Delhi, where I was teaching. Anybody ever read that book? Oh my God, it's one of my favorites. Really? <laughs> yes. It was a song reading in middle school, late elementary school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a story about a boy who leaves New York City, hitchhikes up Route 28 there through the Catskills, and he's searching for his grandpa Gridley's farm, and he goes to the Cannon Free Library, our library, uh, and he searches maps how to find his grandpa Gribley's farm where he thinks and how to live during the fall, winter, and spring all by himself, by nature, you know, and he tames a hawk. And so it was written by this lady, Jean George, and she also won it for Julie of the Wolves. I don't know if anybody read a story about Alaska, okay? So in the back of the book, I said, or this librarian said, Marty, let's have a book fair. You know how the schools have book fairs and they have an author come? And, you know, how the heck are we going to afford an author? You know, it's hundreds, thousands of dollars. So uh, I looked in the back of the book of My Side of the Mountain. It said, she was from Chappaqua, New York. Anybody know where Chappaqua is? Sure. Yeah. Hillary Clinton country. Right. <laughs> so it's very rich, uh, Westchester County. So uh, I dialed, I got the information from 
you know the phone numbers how you used to get today you get it from the internet but then you had to dial five 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 one two and two in the area code so one night i had the courage and i don't know if i was drinking or what but i dialed the number and a lady answered and i said is jean george there she said speaking i'm just a teacher from delhi oh delhi what a wonderful town so I said, we're poor, we can't afford a, an author. How would you like to be our first author? <laughs> she said, I'd love to come. So here I had a Newbery Award winner coming for free. I told other writers, I had 15 other writers, I had kids from K through 12 in our school system all listening to authors in one day. And I did it for 25 years. They all came for free. So. I wanted to get my kids interested in reading. Guess who became an author, too? <laughs> Their teacher. It all happened when I went to a fire tower. How many have climbed the fire tower? Yeah. Wow. Boy, guess what my phobia is? <laughs> so when I climbed this one in 1987, I think I got up to about here. I don't know if I'd get this high, but this is 65 foot high. Okay, some go, uh, there's one up in the Adirondacks, 80 foot, and out in Florida, I think they're 150 feet. Now, you know where there are no mountains? 150 foot high. Uh, so uh, it was in October, like October, but towards the end, and when we were halfway up, the drizzle turned to rain of snow. So there was about four inches of snow, and then a little guy came out of the cabin, the observer, and he said, guys, how would you like to come in and get warmed up and have a drink of water? So, so we sat down and he said, this was the greatest job. He's a retired fireman from New York City, and he got to meet thousands of people from all over the world. And you get paid just sitting up there, okay, and watching for smoke. So I told the publisher, I said, somebody should write a book. They probably be interesting. So, 10 years later, in 97, he said, uh, the publisher called me, he said, Marty, they're trying to save the towers in the Catskills, how would you like to write a book? Bingo, I'm an author. It took me three years, but I got it done. And then I went to the Adirondacks, your neighbors, okay? Some of you people, I guess you can't see, but it, when you're on, right around here by Lake Champlain, you look across, I remember visiting a friend uh, on this side, and it was toward, I think I was Wake Robin. Anybody ever see it stay at that place? It's a senior citizen place. I was giving a talk there uh, about fire towers, and uh, I looked, you could see sun shining one spot and snowing in the other. You know, it's just, it's just awful. Well, same thing, you get uh, the same views here. So uh, I, did the uh, books on the 57 towers there. So I had three books done, and then I used to have publishers coming, and I had this comic book illustrator. He said, Marty, let's book, do a book together. Anybody collect comic books here? No? Into comic. This guy, he did a lot of things, even outdoor life. Just look at these. Every, he did 251 with me. Uh, I wrote the captions and sent him pictures. Look at this. So I've got those books. Mm -hmm. Then somebody had pictures of CCC guys in the Adirondacks. So I went from gathering stories about the men and women up in the tower, just like you had in Vermont and New Hampshire, okay, and Texas, all over the United States you had uh, fire towers, uh, to the men who uh, uh, saved, you know, built up our forests. Because I was in Mendham. Anybody ever go to Mendham? Yeah. yeah. By Killington? Yeah. yeah. This forester took me this morning, and we went up this road, not Notch Road. <laughs> Have you been up there? I know. Yeah. Notch Road. And it turns to dirt, and then there was a Girl Scout camp, but before that, there was a CCC camp there. Okay? And they did a lot of 900 acres they were planting. Uh, of trees, and then when they left, the Girl Scouts took uh, made a camp. How many have been to Sharon? Mm -hmm. 
You know, there was a girls, there still is a camp there, not Girl Scout, but a camp. I was there about a month ago, and they still use some of the buildings of the CCC camp here. How many have been to Burke Mountain? Anybody bikers? Are you a biker? Boy, I tell you, you go to Burke Mountain, you can't believe how many bike, bikes are there. Mountain bikes. You know, the fat tires, and they do it even in the winter time. You know, they're tired. And that serpentine road going up to the top, to the fire tower, built by the CCC. And the guy said, you know the lodge? Anybody know where the ski lodge there in Burke is? You know what it is? Four CCC barracks squished together with two in the front. And that was the lodge, the ski lodge. So I've got to get after the, the guys there at the um, life insurance place where the conservation department is to make sure they save that building. Because otherwise, you know, what happens is just burn them down, you know, they can't take care of or vandalism. So I traveled all over and people would take me in for the night. And uh, I would gather, just keep giving stories just like this. I don't have no book on Vermont. You people, just in the audience, raise your hand if your dad or somebody in your family was in the CCC. Okay, and where, Susan, where was your dad? He was in uh, St. Albans. And what do you remember about that? The only thing he told me was that he moved to cemetery. Um, he had polio when he was a kid, so he had, he couldn't join the military, but he was in the CCC, so he moved to cemetery. And the only thing he said one time was that he saved somebody from drowning. And I had to go take swimming lessons at the age of three. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was going to have his kids drown. <laughs> yeah, at St. Albans, they built that bathhouse. Anybody go there? I've seen pictures. Beautiful bathhouse there. How many have been to Crystal Lake? I was there two weeks ago. You know that beautiful bathhouse? Yeah. It has stone and then layer of brick, stone, brick. Built by the CCCs, like the goosebumps. I mean, it's just I just so, get so excited traveling. Like today, I went uh, Menden, and then what's that one by Killington at State Park, Michelle? Is it Alice? No, Gifford. 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 Whoa, Gifford Woods. You know that beautiful stone uh, building there, uh, the, where the ranger is? That was built by the CCC. It's got the bathroom then an open area with a fireplace, and then the ranger part there. There's three of them that I've seen, same design. Um, Grafton, no, Grafton, Grafton. Anybody go to a little town in Grafton? Mm -hmm. Isn't it beautiful? You take this dirt road, and you get, to, have you been to that, that park there? No. Okay, so I got that book done. And I got the passion. I mean, I can't stop. Uh, I'm in Vermont, and if I have the energy, I'm going to be next month 79. And if I, my, if I still have energy, I'm going to do Massachusetts, 70 camps, and I have to go to Cape Cod, where there are two. I've got to go to the Berkshires, and then I've got to go to I think Martha's Vineyard at one. <laughs> Luckily, I have a Prius, and I get 55 miles per gallon. So tonight, as soon as I leave here, I've got three hours and 36 minutes to get back to Connecticut. But at least, that, you know, it doesn't cost much on the gas. And usually, people take me in. Uh, <laughs> who's taking me in tonight? <laughs> That's what happened one time uh, in the Adirondacks. The guy was supposed to take me in. He said, Marty, I got bad news. We got company. <laughs> okay. I said, he said, anybody want to take Marty in for the night? And the guy raised his hand, oh, yeah, I'll take him. So this is the way, because you can't afford, I mean, last night was the first time I had to stay in a motel in, my, in Vermont, because I didn't know anybody in Rutland area. So I had to get the $160 for a motel for an hour. Well, I found this place, Brandon, 
$79. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody sit? It's motor lodge, $79. Nice and clean. So if you're ever there. Well, then I went to Connecticut, <laughs> where my wife is from. And uh, look at this. The side of the hill, they had benches watching the boxing. Boxing was really popular. Okay? So I did the uh, 21 camps of Connecticut, and the little town that I live in had two camps. And then a guy said, Marty, could you find where my, my uh, dad was? He was in Rhode Island. I had to go to Rhode Island and find in one day. One day I visited the seven camps, so that was easy. And then I got that book done. But I didn't grow up in the Depression. I was born in 43. But my parents, you know, did. And your parents most likely had a rough time. My mother had eight sisters and one brother. Mm -hmm. And her father died black lung coal mining. Mm -hmm. he, he and my grandmother came from uh, Lithuania. And my other grandparents came from Slovakia. So when they came to the wilkes Fair area, the coal region, you know, what do you do? The crappy jobs, just like all the immigrants that come. You know, we're looking for people, right? Guess who's taking the jobs, you know? If we had the immigrants to take them. Uh, the Great Depression, it was terrible. 25% of the people unemployed. Uh, soup kitchens, you know, kids. You know, your fathers, if they were uh, at that age, a lot of them they're poor, yet they quit school at eighth grade or less. I had this one guy, he was from around um, Saratoga. His, his father was working on this uh, Ford plant there in uh, Green Island. Fell off the Ford plant roof, hurt his back, he couldn't work anymore. The kids had to be you know, get little jobs. He was 14 years old. He had to help his mother. So what he did is he went upstairs to his bedroom, got his birth certificate, and he, you old people might remember, the ink eradicator. It was like Clorox, a little bottle uh, with a glass thing, and you could use that to eradicate you know, the, the, uh, the date. And he changed it to be 18, because he had to be 18 years old. So here's this 14-year-old joining. And of course, they took him. He had to be a certain height. And they started big guys picking on him you know, from New York City. Uh, but luckily, a big guy. Where is our big guy here? There's a big guy there. Took care of him. Uh, then he said, you could sign up for six months. And then you could go for another six months, up to two years, okay? So he went, his next trip, who wants to go to Utah? This little guy, maybe he was by 15 now, he's on the train. Can you imagine poor boy going out west, seeing Utah, and he helped build the lodge where the uh, Olympics were held. It was an excuse. Salt Lake City. What's the big the word? Uh -huh. What? Is it Provo? No. <clears throat> it's Provo Michelle, not too close. Not too... No, I don't know that one. No, oh, okay. Well, Ogden? Park City. Park City, there. He went to Park City and he helped build that lodge. They were shooting cannons, you know, stuff like that. But these, this is what they had to do. Eighth grade, that was it. So uh, Roosevelt was elected, okay? And when he ran for election, who did he defeat for 10 points? Raise your hand if you know. Herbert Hoover. Hoover. Who? Herbert Hoover. What's your first name? Dan. Dan gets 10 points. Herbert, Herbert Hoover. Now, for 10 points, what was Hoover's slogan when he ran for president? A chicken in every pot. What's your name? <laughs> What's your first name? Did she have it first? You. In a car in every garage. <laughs> I think it's a tie. Which one? Yeah. Susan gets 10, and what's your name? I didn't say anything. <laughs> she said it. Oh, you said it. What's your first name? Nancy. Nancy. Boy, thanks for being honest. Okay, 10 point. Who could tell me 
I couldn't believe it. One, one audience didn't know this. What was FDR's slogan? The New Deal. What's your name? Steve. Steve. Ten points. The New Deal. Okay? So he promised that he's going to start create the Civilian Conservation Corps to be used, simple work, more important, however, than those with material gains will be the moral and spiritual value of such a work, okay? He went to Congress on March 27th, and it was called, the law, uh, the act was called the Emergency Conservation Work Act, okay? Four days later, it passed the House and the Senate, yes, just like us. <laughs> our, our Congress. Yes. Does every state have buy-in to this offer? Very good question. Next question. How many states were there in 1933? Who said? 48. What's your name? Mike. Mike gets 10 points. 48 states. So there were in the 48 states plus where else? Territories. territories yeah. What territories? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Who said Puerto Rico? What's your name? That wasn't me. <laughs> Nancy. Nancy, 10 points. She's trying to give it to her partner. Oh, and who? Who said Puerto Rico? Richard. Richard gets 10 points. How many have been to Puerto Rico and went up El Yunque, the, the rainforest? That the road going up like that? Yeah. I went into the museum. Guess who built that whole park? See, see, see. I get the goosebumps. I mean, really. There's some guys, possibly still alive, Puerto Rico or living in New York City or some Florida, they came and they helped build that, that park. Okay? Who could tell me the other places? territories that had CCC. Is it the Virgin Islands? Correct. What's your name? Meredith. 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 For, for 10 more points, <laughs> name the three Virgin Islands. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> okay. Nobody gets points. There are too many. <laughs> And I went to St. Croix, and I said, what did they do? I went to this little museum, and they said they planted mahogany trees, no, see, mahogany trees, and they built parks. But they you went home. You had to go there. You, huh? just, you just had to go there. I just happened to be on vacation, and I was, <laughs> I, you know, I, I said, anybody else want to retire? Or anybody want to go on a road trip with me? <laughs> this week I'm going to Rhode Island. My travel club is having the 39 Club. Huh? Let me know when you go to Hawaii. <laughs> All right, what's the other territories that had? Hawaii. Hawaii. Who said Hawaii? <laughs> what's your name? Maureen. Maureen gets her first 10 points. Where else? Alaska. Alaska. And that's David. Dan. 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 So he had all these, and you know, up in Alaska, it had to be in Alaska, too. Anybody like Gold Rush? You watch Dawson City? Well, I went from Vancouver and up to Skagway, from Skagway all the way up to um, Whitehorse, and then up to Dawson City and then over to Fairbanks, and then I went to Denali. And I'm riding on these buses. Guess what? That little park there, the first park that they stop at, built by the CCC. Even the park there where they had the dogs. Uh, there. And their totem poles were in disrepair. Guess what happened? CCC, under the guidance of a uh, local experienced man, they rebuilt the totem poles. Met me? You didn't think you'd be getting all this knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could be here for days, but we got to be short. And you are so lucky that you had this Adirondack boy, okay? Where in the Adirondacks did he come for, from? 
Adirondacks. Yeah, but didn't my mother used to work for him? Yeah. Mm. Very 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 old. Old. What's that? Was really? Yeah. Nobody came. What city? What a little town in the Adirondacks did this poor farm boy come from? Westport. Oh, on Lake no. Champlain, oh, yeah. You didn't know that? No, it's not. Well, you better start reading. <laughs> the Making of a Forester. Oh. Okay? He wrote his own bag. It's an autobiography. I'll start it from the cheap seats. And <laughs> <laughs> right hey, we have another one. Okay, he wrote this other book. <laughs> They, they, they didn't get the, they got them uh, really cheap seats. And he also wrote this one, okay? Right. Just, just hardly anything about Vermont, but the, a whole story about the uh, CCCs. And that might be in our library, Michelle. I'll have to check. Okay. But when I, when I went to the park today, you people are on the ball because your state conservation department put signs like this at the parks where they were built by the CCC, the 26 of them, 26, a big sign was built by the CCC, okay? And this guy here, this poor boy came for 20 points. Who could tell me where did he, what college did he go, university for forestry? But he was able to go to Washington. You kids are at least a reading. Okay? Nobody's they weren't sleeping. Uh, so he went to Washington, 1933, in the spring. He had the plans for the dams to prevent uh, uh, the Winooski from overflowing because the electric companies, the power companies, had them. He said, look, I need, I need to do these projects. Oh, that's a good idea. And these parks that need to create. I've got this forestry. He was able to convince Washington because all the other states that I know of was based on population. What state, for 10 points, at 1933, could get the most boys because of population? The more people you had, the more poor people, they could, you could have more come. Who said, somebody said something. New York. New York, what's your name? Sure. Barrett in 10 points. So they had the most, but guess who? Vermont, because he had the plans and everything, he was able to get a lot of boys, but you'd had, you didn't have enough boys to work. What state probably had about 75% come from there to Vermont? Vermont. That was second. Massachusetts. Massachusetts, Susan, correct. How many people didn't come? Not many people there. We had to send people up to Maine. We had to send them up there, okay? So you had all these Massachusetts boys coming, and they would come, and of course they would have dances, okay? And they would have dances in the, uh, the nearby town, and guess what happened? The local boys see these boys coming all dressed up, these city slickers, you know? Guess what happened? They lost their girlfriends. Oh. And a lot of times they wound up marrying a girl from that town. I was in Bellows Falls, and Marty was in the audience, and he said, My father came from where the Portuguese fishermen in Massachusetts. Bedford, New Bedford, right? Came from that area, working there, met this girl, he wound up marrying her, and of course, the boy goes with the wife, right? <laughs> that's why I'm in Connecticut. <laughs> and uh, so that's the other thing. The, the boy, a lot of times people come and say, if it wasn't for the CCC, I wouldn't be here. 
because you know, they, they, so Massachusetts really loaded. Okay, now the Department of Labor was going to choose which ones were on relief. They called it okay, and who was the person in charge of the Department of Relief by uh, under Roosevelt? Harry Hawkins. Who? Harry Hawkins. Harry Hawkins? No. 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 Woman. Oh, well, yeah. she was a woman. Well, who was it? Francis Perkins. Yes. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> what she said. I said Francis Perkins. Francis Perkins is correct. Ten <laughs> points. Your first name again? Nancy. Nancy's rolling away with it here. The army was chosen because they could feed, clothe, shelter, free medical care yeah. in 1933. Can you imagine that? Oh, free, medical free medical care. Free medical care. What a mess. Where's Bernie? Where's Bernie here? Is it true Bernie's not running for Senate? What? Oh, that's Leahy. That's Leahy. That's Leahy. Oh, it's Leahy. I saw something on the news that he wasn't running. And I thought it was Bernie. No. Oh, okay, Lay. Okay, okay. So each camp had a doctor. Oh, a doctor. A doctor. Okay, these were from something that's right there. Right there, right there to take care of the boys. Okay. Now each camp had two hundred boys approximately. Okay. A lot of them were coming up from Massachusetts, some Rhode Island, they, even uh, in New Hampshire too. They were coming over, uh, coming up to help New Hampshire. Now, is the question: Rhode Island or uh, Vermont had four barracks. We've got four barracks, two hundred boys. How many boys in one barracks? Who said that? No, What's your name? Bob. Bob. Are you an accountant? <laughs> <laughs> Just not a general. Fifty is correct. Now, in the other states, New York, Connecticut, they have five barracks. How many in one barracks? Again. Genius. Now, just picture. 40 guys or 50 guys in Vermont in one barracks, one big room, 18 to 25. If anybody was a teacher, high school, I was seventh grade for a teacher for 30 some years. Sorry. And all you had to do now was one kid. One A boom boom. And just to wreck, I remember this one kid, it was my fourth period. Oh, when he came, it was dynamite. Okay, so how could the army? They would have a captain from World War One, and an uh, what do they call it? Second lieutenant to watch these all these two hundred boys. So you have fifty guys in the barracks. The captain would look around. What's your name? Lowry. Larry. Larry. Lowry. Lowry. Lowry, you're going to be the leader in Barracks One. And instead of getting a dollar a day, $30 like everybody else, you get 45 What's your name? Ed. Ed? Ed, you're going to be his assistant. Barracks One, $35. $36. That's $6 more than the rest of the guys. But you, too, have to keep those 48 guys in line. Beds made, everything cleaned up, you know. Get, imagine getting these teenagers up out of bed at six in the morning. So that's what they had to do. Now, <laughs> who said that? Job. Hey, don't forget the ladies of the evening. <laughs> okay, the ladies of the evening. That's true. 
they would have the checks. Boy, after they came back from town, the doctor would have to check for VD. <laughs> yeah? Now, I found this. I can't even remember. I had two. I can't find the other one. But I wasn't in the Army. Any Army boy, men or women here? What does this mean? Two stripes. Corporal. Yeah. All right, Lowry, you, do, you don't want these two stripes? Well, $45? All right, sure. Okay. So then the other one would get. Now, these uniforms didn't come out till later on, okay? When Roosevelt saw how ill clad they were. I'll start these in the cheap seats. This was about 1935 or 36. They have these nice, and look at the way it's sewn. I mean, it's really nice, okay? Uh, and they would wear these, you know, hitchhiking home if they were, weren't too far, you know, maybe 30 miles, 40 miles, 50, and they would wear the uniform, and those are the days when you Picked up people hitchhiked, right? And they would get rides if they had the uniform on. I think I only did one time. I picked up somebody on the New Jersey Turnpike because he had a uniform. But I was, well, my mother always don't go hitchhiking, don't go hitchhiking. It was just, and today, you don't even see people hitchhiking, do you? They have their own cars. <laughs> now, the Bonus Army came in 1932 with Hoover. Okay, during, uh, af during the, after the war, they were promised a bonus, 1946. When they were older, they would get some money, but the soldiers didn't have jobs, these veterans from World War I. They came to Washington, they had their tents. Hoover, what did he do? Looks like he burned. He sent in MacArthur. Actually, he sent in MacArthur to remove them from federal buildings, and MacArthur went overboard and started shooting everybody in sight, pushed them all in the Antarctica River. Burn them. Okay, it burned was, some. And he was not told not to do that. Look at this. Is this Dan or Dan? Dan. Yeah. What? Dan. 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 Okay, Dan. thanks. Okay, so Dan gets 10 points. Now, 1933, we have a new president, the Bonus Army. We're, we don't have jobs. We need money. Just like people today with the inflation. Now, help us, help us. Roosevelt's. Who does he send to take care of these bonus army? Eisenhower. Starts with an E. Eisenhower. No. Eleanor? Eleanor is correct. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt. He's not sending soldiers in like some people would need to because of riots, etc. He sends in Eleanor drives in. What's the problem? You don't have a job? She goes back, tells FDR, and if you're the president, do you want to have protesters all over the United States and the world protesting? No, you've got to keep your politician, right? So he said, we're going to have camps for the young guys, 18 to 25, and veterans of World War I. And guess who came to Montpelier? <laughs> Veterans of World War I. That's who built your dams. Did you know that? 5,000, I get the goosebumps, came to Montpelier to bury and built those dams with their hands, okay? Especially the, bar uh, the East Barry Dam. They had shovels, wheelbarrows, couple trucks, sledgehammers, picks. And I looked at the size of that dam. That's moving a lot of dirt, okay? They got better at Wrightsville Dam. They got more, you know, more equipment. And then when they did the uh, Waterbury Dam, they had really lots of equipment. That was in 35, okay? So there we have veterans. Okay, now here's the East Barry Dam. Look at this. Look at the shovels. They have a couple trucks, wheelbarrows, hundreds of wheelbarrows. 
And then they was year round that they worked. Even in the winter time. Can you imagine that? Yeah. It's just, it's just, how many of you have, have you passed my yearbook around? Got it right. yep. No, the yearbook from the dance. I mean, it's just unbelievable what these guys did. Okay? And they had physical exams. They had to be a certain height. I think about five foot two, three. Like Susan, your dad, you said it was short. And I think maybe six five or six six. And one physical quality, you had to have three teeth. masticating teeth, <laughs> uppers and lowers. <laughs> three total or three on each? Three, oh. at least three on top and three on the bottom. <laughs> Now everybody starts laughing, but why? Why laugh at this? Because they didn't have the money. The parents didn't have time to go take them to the dentist for their cleaning like we do today. My granddaughter, four years old, had a cavity. Goes to the doctor, filling $300 in New Canaan. $300. Okay, there's the uniforms. There's the clothes from World War I. Yes? So, I don't see any African Americans in this. Were they segregated? They were segregated in New York, Pennsylvania, and down south. But in New England, I thought we were, well, you know, good, good people. But one of the reasons they said there just weren't that many. So they didn't have 200 guys to make a camp in Rhode Island and Vermont, you know, and Maine. So your camps were integrated for New England. Okay? Yeah, Rhode Island, Connecticut, yes? My father was at the Plymouth camp. Which in camp? Plymouth camp in, in Vermont. Oh, the Plymouth camp and by Scotney. Well, well, sort of, but by Ludlow there. And um, wait a minute. You're talking about the Shrewsbury camp? No, I'm talking about Coolidge. That's the by Scotney. It's by Killington. No, where she's talking about the Plymouth camp. Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge. They had a lot of That's the Escutney. You've seen it. So what's your question? Well, I was just going to say, he worked in Plymouth Camp. He talked about working in the Plymouth Camp. And he was in the Plymouth Camp. Yeah, they were mixed. And those people, and one of those guys used to come to our house. He was from Rhode Island, and they came up. He and his wife came up to our house in Woodstock every summer. Really? Yeah, they they stayed friends. He apparently had saved this. My father had saved the man's life. He was caught under a tree out in the woods. My father somehow. Okay, and I forgot to ask the other people too. I got distracted. Who else? Their father or grandfather? Yes, Susan. You told. She told yeah. the story. Who's did? All right, listen to this guy. <laughs> My grandfather was at CCC, but he was education director, and he went to many different camps and was the education director of Rickard Mills, Groton, Burke, Waterbury. Um, that, that box back there, this metal box, is full of a bunch of stuff I gave to Marty several months ago to make copies of stuff. He's got some. Uh, bunch of scrapbooks with pictures and long long photos of everybody in the camp and this is a book. I think that's a goosebumps. Did they have educational programs? They did. They had you know like high vocational school, stuff, vocational stuff typing, type reading, type writing, writing, everything. Uh -huh. Scott. Yeah. Where was your grandfather from? Uh, Italy. Italy. But then he came to Vermont. He lived yeah, you know, he grew up uh, he lived uh, for a little while in Bethel, and then he came to Barry. To Barry, okay. okay. And is it okay to pass this around? Sure. You're very careful. What okay? was he doing before the season? This is unbelievable. <laughs> oh, he was, oh. uh, that was a physical that was education instructor. 
Yeah. Those are the color. I mean, I passed you know, the, the, uh, the, 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 the granite place today, and I was really thinking about his name was this, this, this color. You know, has a, has the, the, his grandfather Carby yeah. did this picture. Because you had a lot of people from Italy came there, were very good with make, doing things with stone. So, and a lot of these parks too, they needed a mason to work along with these boys. And sometimes they were Italian, sometimes they might have been, uh, there's some lady, she said her dad helped build the one in Townsend, the building, because he was a mason. And I still haven't met her. Oh God. I got 10 minutes. Ah, okay. Uh, there. There's, there's the Marshfield. I haven't hit that town, no. but that's where they came by train <clears throat> to work at Groton uh, State Park there. And that six mile road was, yeah. a, was built by the CCC. Can you believe that? They did the dam as well, Marshfield Dam? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I, am, I don't think so. But look at this. Now they had sh nice boots, uh, underwear, nice woolen clothes. And you would sign up, say, in April, and you would go to October. So you're working in the spring, in the summer, fall. The guys that signed up for November, October, had to go through the whole winter, and then your six months was up in April. So you had to have good clothing, okay? And the army gave it to you. And there's the barracks. <clears throat> They'd have stoves. And see these windows, the way they open? Yes. This was deathly. Brian, could you tell them about that? Yeah. That, that's, that's, Brian is the historian from uh, Waterbury. And he knows the stuff about, he's built the stuff about the uh, Waterbury Dam. Yeah, the CCC barracks across the country had those windows that tilted in, and, and as Marty said, there was death, death traps. It was a huge publicity problem for the CCC because barracks kept burning and young guys kept dying. And on Christmas night, 1935 in Waterbury, the officers' quarters burned with killing four of the CCC boys because they couldn't get out those windows. But you see, everything is neat, just like our children and grandchildren, right? Don't they keep their rooms nice and tidy? Well, of course. Then they had a medical care, okay? They had a doctor. Even they had a traveling doctor, a dentist, to go around the camps. And uh, they, they had a boy, like the guy who's the president of the Bennington Historical Society. <clears throat> he has his dad's records, pictures, about 50 pictures of his dad signing up. Rochester newspaper, his dad's picture in the Rochester paper signing up to go. It's a, you should see the collection he has. A PDF file of, of you know, a, a PowerPoint. So they would just stay, oh sorry, they would stay there and help and take care of basic medical things. Work with the thing. They even show his father giving a shot, okay? Uh, now here's the Bellows Falls. The people didn't know anything about this. Okay, where it was, etc. I just would stop along the road uh, and ask people until I finally found where this was. It was on a dirt road. You know where exit four is or five on uh, 91 for Bellows Falls that goes to Walpole. <clears throat> okay, if you get off that and there's a nice place, gas station and bakery and pizza and stuff. There's a dirt road right next to it that goes up to the top and this up here is where Route 91 is. Oh. But some lady saw my newspaper story. I said I'm looking for pictures, etc. And I got, that's how I got to meet Scott. And it, it, it is uh, getting his grandfather stuff. And so this is the basic idea. If you see a chimney in the woods, that was probably the rec hall. Oh wait, right there, the rec hall. Okay, this is the kitchen, and there's the mess hall. All the trucks would be in garages. They didn't leave them out, and they would have a blacksmith there working on uh, any time you needed a material. Elmore Camp, the summer of, uh, <clears throat> what was it, the summer of July, August, 
September, they didn't have any barracks yet. They had to live in tents, army tents. So sometimes, yes. Uh, this might be jumping ahead, but did the Conservation Corps evolve into the Army Corps of Engineers? No. 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 David? Um, the Army Corps of Engineers was the 18th century. Okay. Then, do, 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 do. six o'clock, <laughs> get up. Okay? And everything, they'd have inspections. The captain would come maybe once a week or so. Look at everything was neatly arranged on the, uh, at the tables in the tent. Then they also had to do the cooking in a tent, too. And then uh, they would have at the May beginning, roll call, raising of the flag, and then at, this is at the end of the day when they would dress nicely for uh, dinner. Look at this, is the water bearing. Look at all the trucks. They were all at, uh, when they were building the dam. Did you know the North Field camp was on the fairgrounds? On the fairgrounds. I stopped in Norwich two weeks ago, and I thought I this was Northville. I'm asking, where's the where's the where's the camp uh, fair, fair, fairground? They said it's right here. No, no, it's it's not in front of the school. It was. I had the two towns screwed up. Okay, and then if you go to Weston, okay, you know where uh, Vermont Country Stores began. Uh, there was a camp there. And so what they needed, too, they needed a guy to go on the truck and teach them basic skills, maybe a logger. They didn't have a job. Uh, a, uh, what else did they need? Oh, masons, carpenters, and these LEM, local experience men, they were happy to get a job to work with like a squad, maybe 12 boys, to doing a project. Look at, here's St. Albans. Susan, is your dad there? Uh, sure. <laughs> I don't know when that was taken. Uh, big thing, road building, because they had to get the trees, the bad trees out, and also when there's a forest fire, to get into the woods. Eight hour day, what was the favorite sandwich of the boys? Peanut butter and cheese. Ten points. Peanut Who's butter and cheese. Peanut Nancy? Hot dogs? Nancy, ten points. What was that? Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. And look at this. I think this was up by, a, I don't know if it was by Willoughby or was it by Burke. Uh, dams they built, small ones. They built big. And this is the one in Townsend. And this, this lady, someplace around here, her, her father supervised with LEM. They'd have to teach them how to, how to use heavy equipment. Then they would come for supper, okay? They had some boys, they had to learn how to cook for 200 people. Three meals a day, and look at, then they would go back to their barracks, relax, okay? And they had pet dogs, too. And then I, of this, they ate really well. <laughs> and you see, everything is nice and, see those windows? No, no, they aren't the windows. But see, all the thing they had was this homo soap, it's like pressed paper, cardboard or uh, something like that, homo soap. I remember my dad used it. And that was the, the only insulation. And on the walls were outside tar paper. That's it, in the roof. Uh, the boys would bring their bands, uh, their uh, equipment, their instruments. This boy was an assistant leader. He was paid $36 a month. And he had to order the candy, cigarettes, pipe tobacco, shaving equipment, etc., like that. Uh, you could just see the, uh, the tar paper. Okay? Why do they have ladders on the roofs? Fires, why? Chimney fire. Chimney fire. How many have heated with wood and heard that noise? You know, when the creosote catches on fire? My brother-in-law's house burned down because of a, a creosote fire, because there was a crack in the flue. What town did they go to from camp Elmore? They went to Elmore, probably the lake there. Maybe they, you know. Oh, wait a minute. They go around the, around the hill. To, what's that town? Towards Stowe. Towards Marshall. Yeah. They had that old Bijou Theater. 
It's then, still there. Actually. Is it still there? Yeah. yeah. In what's the town? Morrisville. Morrisville. There it is. Okay. There's the Windsor camp. That's the camp uh, your dad was in. Okay. Look. Okay. And then they look at the sports. The, the money they made at the canteen, they would buy sports equipment and play other teams, CCC teams, even town teams. And look at the soldiers in East Barry Dam with their ski slope. And it was your guy, that Adirondack boy, who went to either Sweden or Norway in the 20s, saw people skiing. He came back, it's right in the book, came back and said, we gotta get these people you know, doing something in the winter. Bring money, and look at the money that has brought, brought people to, and basketball, the basketball teams would go to the high school close by, or the Grange Hall uh, to play. There's the Cooks, uh, and it might have been a uh, priest or a minister, and uh, some lady last yesterday, she said, what about the Jewish boys? The Jewish boys were there too, but I don't know if there was a, uh, a rabbi that maybe uh, went around, or maybe there might have been a synagogue in town, not too many. Then, education classes, yes? How many years? All together, did the CCC last? 1933 yeah. to 42. July it ended. Okay, because now we were in World War II, we needed the boys. Okay, so Scott, can you tell a little bit more about your dad or your grandfather? What did he talk? Well, I've got pictures. He was uh, he got a baseball team. And oh, he, he did all the places. Sports. And it just basically showed him, you know. They had a section where they had typewriters and you know they would teach people to write and read if they didn't know that. They had uh, I getting their uh, GED for high school or even an eighth grade diploma. Yeah. Some were even taking college classes. There were college boys too that were in the CCC. They had a library. Okay, they had a library. Let's see if we could show. There, this is the Danby camp. Look at it, nice library. Nick, look at the veterans there at Waterbury Camp, taking classes at night. They even raised pigs, okay? Then they had to teach them how to drive trucks, and look at all the trucks they had. Isn't that amazing? Okay, some would be army trucks, and some would be conservation trucks. And each camp had usually a monthly camp newspaper. Mm -hmm. She'll start in the back. And, uh, you can find these online. Just look under for CCC camp newspapers, and it tells you the state, and then you could get the camp. And look at this. A guy came to one of my talks in Connecticut. He said he had he found this, or I don't know. He must have sprayed it. I said, do you want to sell? No. But he took one of my books instead. So I got so what does it say? What does it say? Okay, it says this driver is required to drive carefully and has the CCC <laughs> Now, if a boy, like a boy said he was driving in Lake George uh, and the police stopped him for doing something wrong, okay? And the boy says, you can't give me a ticket. <laughs> And the policeman said, yes, you are. You're getting this ticket. He went back and told the captain. The captain went down to the chief and said, he's working for the Army. You can't give him a ticket. So, and they had governors on them to keep them at a speed, like 35 miles, I think. But I don't know if they changed it. But a lot of truck accidents with the kids 18 years old driving, flipping over, boys died. Gas teeth, you know, one guy told me in Oregon, you know, driving in Oregon and uh, <clears throat> those Colorado, those roads with no guardrails, oh, flipping over, boys died you know, when the barracks caught on fire, just like uh, Brian said there. We're almost done. There's the can. And you could get these online or uh, eBay, Happy Days. Ooh. It was a national newspaper. News from all over the 48 states, Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico. And what did these boys accomplish? 
Look at all the work, fire breaks. They try to stop the gypsy moths. <clears throat> Beach improvement, uh, grading, uh, parking areas, picnic grounds, walks, fish rearing, steam impro stream improvement, searching for missing persons, hikers, hunters, surveying. A lot of boys learned how to survey uh, and became surveyors. And some boys just became truck drivers when they left us, and some cooks. Look at here, the whole United States, 100,000 billion trees planted. Oh, wow. wow. And you could tell these trees, you know, the height of these trees, whether it was, and some of them are wow. right in uh, nice orderly. Four million bands. Look at fire towers, 3,400, wow. like that one on uh, Burke Mountain. That was built by the CCC. Mm -hmm. Forgot. Well, Oh, the one on a Scutney, too. I think, I think, hold it. Might be wrong. Okay, now, I have to leave. Now, because otherwise I could come back again with the book and I'll tell you more. <laughs> but I got three hours and 36 minutes to drive home to connect to it. And you people, I've worked really hard today offices and in the uh, quarries, etc. <laughs> uh, so before you leave, sign my thing if you'd like to be on the, the list for it to get the book when it comes out. And I'm going to, I was thinking, i got to get it done for this year, uh, next year, the 90th anniversary. So I'd like to thank you all for coming. Anybody wants to buy a book of mine on the table? Uh, Twenty dollars or two for thirty-five? Yes. Question. Yeah, Marty, uh, can I make the announcement? Hmm. Okay, I asked Marty earlier. Great beer. Where? My name is George Edson. I'm chairman of the Montpelier Historical Society, and we have a meeting, a, a program, public program, this Saturday at the Pavilion Auditorium, and the name of it is the Golden Age of Vermont State News Coverage, and there's going to be a panel of Chris Graff. Diane Derby, Peter Martin, Steve Terry, names you uh, mostly, many of you would know, uh, and a panel moderated by Mark Johnson from WDEB. So, 2 o'clock at the Pavilion Auditorium, free, love to see you there. And I got some sheets if you want more detail, I got a couple pieces of paper. Okay. Thank you. And there's free newspapers, the CCC Legacy. It's a national organization, we try to keep it alive. To look at my books, look at the map, where all the uh, CCC camps were, up there. And please sign my clipboard. Class dismissed.